Hello YouTube audience. Today is June the 26th, 2021, and I would like to do a update on my Japanese black pine. Uh, and I think a little bit more than a year ago, I reported this tree, uh, changed it into more inorganic bonsai soil and uh, also did a air layering on this uh, expecting one day this air layering is going to re be removed and become a independent tree uh, after a year uh, the pine tree is growing very well uh, becoming uh, very healthy uh, the first year reported the tree was a little bit weak and didn't push out a lot of uh, strong needle growth um, but in fact that's expected because the strength of the pine tree is uh, in its root system so the first year we report uh, we reduce a lot of the rigor of the tree uh, that's why it was not growing very well but as long as it survived the second years you can see it's starting to grow very well and the needle are very sharp which is indication of its health um, and uh, we start to see uh, elongating needles so for most of the people um, doing Japanese black pine bonsai, uh, they may know that this is a good time to decandle, meaning cutting all this candle off to force back budding uh, to happen. Like you can see here, somebody decandled a while ago and then you have four little uh, candle uh, grow out from this point where it was decandled um, so but uh, so this part I'm air layering it and all these new growths are going to generate energy to um, to generate roots in this air layer so because I haven't seen obvious pine root there are some weed here but ha haven't seen obvious pine root coming out from the bed yet so I don't think I can remove it right now uh, because the strength of the pine tree is in its root system so we need plenty of root uh, to support the air layering so uh, I would not underestimate it the uh, time that it takes for pine to root in the air layering uh, pine is a very difficult tree to do air layering and because last year I reported the tree the tree didn't get a lot of growth so it doesn't didn't have much energy to generate root in this air layering so I'm going to wait uh, maybe to next spring and take a look again and see if I can remove this air layer um, So if it doesn't succeed uh, I I can still remove the tree because it's intended this part is intended to be removed anyway uh, so This year we will just leave this part alone and without doing any uh, decandling uh, or things like that. Mm, I think I'm going to leave basically the whole tree alone and um, just doing some minor, minor um, tuning of the tree. So we can see at this place, 
I think this was the original trunk, probably a very tall trunk. And the grower of this tree cut the trunk off. And at where he cut, there are plenty of branches come out from one point. Um, so it start to form a swelling place, form inverse taper here. Uh, so I would need to deal with it um, a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this cascading branch to avoid the inverse taper here. Um, So inverse taper is just swelling in the place where it uh, is smaller uh, at the lower part and bigger at the upper part of the tree, which is not very desirable feature. So I'm going to cut this branch off, leaving a stub. Okay, so this is cut off. I could do a air layering on this part if I would like to, but I've already got one and waiting. I don't want to wait for too long for the training of the tree. And every time you pine, you prune a pine it's uh you're going to get these very nice pine smell and uh, it's very enjoyable okay so this should help to slow down the inverse taper that's already generating a little bit here but i think after removing this tree I'm leaving these, the branch is going to die here, but um, I'm leaving some space for it to die back. Uh, because this branch is small, so it's not very necessary to create a, uh, a gin here. So after this branch completely die off and dry out, I'm going to uh, cut the whole thing off. And uh, I think the rest of the tree is doing quite well. I don't really need to do a lot this year because I want it to grow and gain a lot of strength. before I remove this air layer. Okay, the rest of it, I think I would continue to fertilize it. We are having this intense heat wave uh, and uh, I think the pine tree like heat. So it's probably going to enjoy the heat and grow a lot this year. Hopefully it will gain enough strength to generate root in here, um, hopefully this year. Mm. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to continue to add fertilizer to the, you can see I already have a lot of fertilizer bags in, in here but I'm going to add more. Uh, anywhere I still have space, I'm going to add some more fertilizer to it. Okay. I think I still have space for three bags, so that's what I'm going to do.
Also, we can do a little bit of the weeding. These are weeds. I also have some of these little thing growing. Mm. I also have some of these little I don't know the name, looks like a succulent to me. Uh, that's from Dan Robinson. Uh, so people familiar with his bonsai probably see a lot of these growing in his bonsai park. And last year we went for a pine pruning party in his garden and he gave some of these as a gift to us. So it's uh, pretty nice, it's growing very easily. Um, So these fertilizer bags, they are just, they just contains a lot of fertilizers and uh, these are going to allow the application of fertilizers without uh, the fertilizer clogging the soil. I'm going to put some root zone. Uh, it's beneficial mycorrhiza and uh, bacteria. So pine should love this thing because pine is probably one of the most famous thing that form a symbiosis, symbiotic relationship with the fungus and bacteria in the soil so beneficial fungus and beneficial bacteria should benefit it I'm going to put bacteria in and then I'm going to put fertilizer in I'm going to give it plenty of fertilizer Okay, I think that's plenty. And then I'm going to put this onto the soil where there isn't a bag of fertilizer yet. And I'm going to pin it down to the soil. So that uh, hopefully animals doesn't get to it. I think this video is going to be relatively short because it's just a brief update on the tree. I'm not styling it and I'm not wiring it. Just if there is any in problem I need to immediately deal with, I'm going to deal with it. And also, um, people are anxious to see this tree and see how it's doing. And the answer is it's doing well. And uh, the air layering hasn't picked yet. It may have, but I don't think it has enough root right now for the removal. And uh, so I cannot claim it's successful right now. Uh, but I will continue to wait and just be patient uh, because this is a conifer, not a deciduous tree, 
so the root growth is going to be slower so I will be extra patient mm. one more bag I need to put in I think I'm going to put it in here just right behind the tree from the camera view so I'm just trying to spread the uh, fertilizer uh, in different directions so that the root will seek out the direction and grow in all uh, seek out the fertilizer and grow in all directions so the fungus and mycorrhiza uh, I should have applied uh, when I was repotting but I think even just a year ago these were not available I think the horticulture people ultimately um, figure out how to extract, cultivate and extract these fungus and bacteria uh, but still we need to test it um, because although people can grow this in lab and harvest them they may not grow in the wild so I don't know if it's going to really do good to the plant yet in theory it should because uh, it form a very good relationship with the root uh, with the root uh, Peter Warren uh, interview and a plant microbiologist um, maybe about a year ago and uh, the biologist uh, compare the uh, beneficial bacteria to uh, farm animals and the tree is like the uh, farmer and uh, uh, providing these bacteria is like uh, providing the person animals fish sheep and all that they would have to grow the animal to get their fruit in this process the person becomes strong uh, while when you directly provide uh, fertilizer it's like providing them just the food and uh, they don't have the process um, to make themselves don't have the farming process to make themselves strong and independent so a lot of the bacteria they actually travel from the root to the foliage and provide the uh, nutrition to the foliage and also they provide antifungal property so for pine there are beneficial fungus like the mycorrhiza in the root but there are also uh, detrimental um, fungus that actually hurt the tree so in the winter we normally would need to apply a winter spray, a spray um, like um, diluted Uh, lime sulfur to prevent fungus issue especially in the wet weather in Seattle uh, pines like very warm weather and Seattle is a little bit cold uh, but these heat wave the trees should like it because we have about 30 six degrees celsius at uh in the daytime and 21 degrees celsius uh, at night time so it's very high i think it's maybe between 180 fahrenheit um, 
from daytime to nighttime. So the tree will enjoy this weather. Uh, I just have to make sure I water the tree well and also water the air layer so that the whole thing doesn't dry out. Uh, and I'm just going to hope that it grows very well this year. And hopefully next year we will see two separate tree. Or if it doesn't work, the air layer doesn't work, this part is still my intended tree. Okay, I hope you enjoy this video and uh, I will see you next time. Bye.